Hey, what's going on guys? JMac here. So today we're going to run a Carnival Homunculus Sacrifice build. Now, I just want to preface this video by saying that uh, you definitely don't want to run this in Greater Rifts. This is strictly a T6 farming build, basically built to just farm T6 efficiently and quickly. Um, on top of that, you definitely don't have to run Homunculus with Sacrifice to make a Carnival build do really well in T6. I just enjoy it. I think it's a lot of fun. I like seeing the big numbers. And I like uh, just being able to blow up bosses really quick when you have four or five stacks of uh, Provoke the Pack. And then also, this setup is not going to outperform Jade Harvester. If you have a really efficient Jade Harvester build for T6 farming, or any difficulty for that matter, it's going to outperform just about everything else for Witch Doctor. With that said, this is still very efficient for T6 farming, and uh, you can even run Carnival up into the 40, early 40 Greater Rifts at the moment with the most recent changes. So, this is really just a fun build, it's a, it's a good time in T6, and it's definitely a nice change of pace from just running Jade until your eyes bleed. Alright, first things first, let's go over the changes with, with the most recent patch, patch 2.1.2. So, we got a couple pretty big damage buffs with this patch. Basically what they did is they finally allowed the increases poison dart damage, uh, roll on gear to affect all of your fetish's darts. So every time your fetish's shoot darts, that damage is going to be applied to all of your fetish's as well as yourself now. Whereas before that was not being applied to your fetish's, which made it pretty much worthless. So rolling that on your offhand, your pants, and your belt are going to be extremely good. And uh, before we were stacking mainly fetish army damage, but that only affected 8 of our fetishes. This now affects all 23 fetishes we can have out at once, which is pretty crazy and it's a huge damage buff. The second big damage buff was that Simplicity Strength now also affects the fetishes. So that extra damage from this is applied to all of your fetishes when they shoot darts now. Another pretty giant buff. And uh, is what it really, as long as you're running a Unity, which we're not running a Unity for T6, but if you are running a Unity setup and probably a Zuni string um, and a few other variations, probably a Witching Hour or something like that, you can run up into the 40, early 40 Greater Rifts. I know a couple of people that have done 41s with this build, um, and I personally have done, I believe, a 39. Uh, as long as I'm running a Unity and a Witching Hour and the proper setup for Greater Rift. So it's definitely possible to do now with the damage buff. It's still not going to compete with Jade. Jade's probably still going to do, you know, four or five tiers higher of Greater Rifts than this, but it's much closer than it was before the patch. Alright, spec-wise, it's pretty standard for the most part. We're going to be running Poison Dart Snake to the Face now. You don't need to run Snake to the Face. You can run Splinters if you want to for more damage. Since we're not running a Unity, you know, even though T6 is really a joke at this point, since I'm not running the Unity, I still like the extra CC on bosses and Elites and Champions and stuff, just to be on the safe side. You know, if you pull like like three Elite packs, there's still a chance you could die here and there, especially when you're running through the maps really, really quick. So I like the extra crowd control there, but you can run Splinters if you want to. Fetish Army Legion of Daggers, so we have eight fetishes out from that. Piranha's Perinado is really important to pull everything together, so you're maximizing your Dagger of Darts and the Pierce ability from that. Spirit Walk Jaunt for movement speed. We're running the Homunculus, like I said, with Provoke the Pack for the damage increase here. The majority of the time, if I'm just fighting trash mobs, I will just have one stack of this up pretty much all the time, just because the trash is dying so fast. Um, against elites and champions, I'll try to have a couple stacks, and then against the bosses, we'll unload everything and try to have you know four stacks up if we can against a boss to just blow them up really quick. Big Bad Voodoo Slam Dance, pretty self-explanatory. Damage increase there, and attack speed, which attack speed is king in any Carnival build because the fetishes shoot darts when you shoot a dart. The more attack speed your character has, the better the build is. Pierce the Veil for more damage. Fierce Loyalty for more movement speed. Fetish Psychophants, obviously that's where a lot of our damage is coming from, and then Grave Injustice for cooldown reduction. Alright, let's take a quick look at the gear. So, just again, this is not set up for Greater Rifts whatsoever, this is a T6 setup. In Greater Rifts, you're not going to be running a Zuni Pox, you're going to be running a Unity and a Zuni String of Skulls to get that 4-piece bonus more than likely. But for T6, we're obviously running the Carnival, your fetishes shoot a Poison Dart every time you do, it's what makes the build work. Uh, we're running a Dagger of Darts here, your Poison Darts and your Fetish's Poison Darts now pierce. You could definitely run a Star Metal Kukri, but I think the Dagger of Darts is much better. What it allows you to do is have more area of effect with the darts piercing, and since each dart that you cast is going to be hitting multiple targets, you'll have more chances to summon Fetish's from the Fetish Psychophant's passive. 
So we're running that. We got the homunculus with poison dart damage on it. Basically, you know, allows the sacrifice to work there. We're getting that's where we're getting our zombie dogs from. Uh, so Zuni wise, we've got Zuni boots that are ancient. We've got the Zuni chest that's ancient with fetish army damage on it. And we've got the Zuni pox here. Not a great roll on this. This could be much better, but that's what we're going to rock for now. We'll go over the legendary gems here in just a minute. And we've got the Ring of Royal Grandeur to get that four piece bonus there with crit damage and attack speed. Uh, we're also running Augild's shoulders with fetish army damage and Augild's bracers with poison damage, since we're basically just doing all poison damage with the darts there. And we get the three piece bonus with the Ring of Royal Grandeur. Uh, we're also running two piece canes. So we got trifecta canes on the gloves, and then the canes pants with poison dart damage. At the moment, I am running this Crim's buff belt, mainly because it's ancient for one thing. It gives us a ton of movement speed for T6, and it has poison dart damage. Now, the majority of the time, you want to run a belt that gives you attack speed, either a witching hour or a hellcat waist guard. But for what we're doing currently, this is the best belt that I have. Just that movement speed's pretty insane. We don't really take all that much damage, so we get that move speed pretty often. And we're able to just run through the maps very quickly with this, this setup. We've also got an S of Johan. Again, you can really run just about any, any amulet that you have that's good. You know, as long as you have crit chance, crit damage in a socket, and then either a main stat or poison damage there. Uh, it's going to work for you. This is pretty nice, though, to be able to gather things up even without casting Perinato. Definitely a nice addition there. Um, so that's about it for the gear. I mean, it's a relatively standard setup. Again, it's going to be much different for Greater Rifting. I'm going to put out a Greater Rift guide for a Carnival build here in, here in the next few days. Um, but this is the current setup that I really enjoy for T6. You can do a lot of different things. You could run Horrify Stalker here and change this to any other uh, offhand that you wanted. You could run like a Shukrani's Triumph for more movement speed with Spirit Walk and stuff like that. But I think the Sacrifice setup is the most fun. Paragon points wise, get as much movement speed as you need. We have 11% on our boots, so we got 14% here to get the 25% max, then went Intelligence. Offense wise, you want to go mostly attack speed. You want to make sure you get to that 50% crit chance cap for your pets, and then go crit damage so make sure you get that crit chance then attack speed then crit damage and then you can put the rest into cooldown reduction defense wise armor life percentage all res utility wise area damage and life on hit are the, really the only two that matter uh, resource cost reduction is irrelevant we don't really use mana at all hardly the majority of the time we're just spamming poison dart and then uh, i guess gold find after that if you want to so let's go over the uh, Legendary gems real quick. So the two mandatory ones, the Gogok of Swiftness, you just get so much attack speed out of one stat with this that it's pretty much mandatory. I think it's probably at its best in a Carnival build across all of the classes. This is probably the best build for it. It's just so much attack speed and attack speed is so key in this setup to maximize your DPS. And we're gonna run the Simplicity Strength like we already talked about. You get a ton of damage out of it and uh, the, the heal is actually pretty nice too. In T6, it's not that big of a deal, but once you start doing some higher difficulty content, that extra heal definitely becomes relevant at times. As far as the third legendary gem goes, there's a lot of options here. I like the Enforcer. It gives you a good bit of damage. If you're doing higher, greater rifts, that 25% less damage taken by your pets is going to be relevant. And uh, it's much better in Carnival than a Mask of Jerum build because this stacks additively with the Mask of Jerum pet damage buff. So you don't get near as much damage in that build, but since we're not running the Mask of Jerum, you actually get way more out of it in a Carnival setup. Uh, you can also run the Gem of Efficacious Toxin. We do have poison damage on our bracers, so that's going to buff the dot here, which isn't bad. And then enemies will take 10% increased damage. On T6, I don't know if I'd really recommend this just because things are dying so quickly, but if you're doing a difficulty level where the enemies aren't dying all that fast and that dot's gonna be able to tick at least for half of its duration, then that's a good option. Even Zy Stone of Vengeance is not bad. Uh, this is a multi, uh, multiplier, a damage multiplier. So even if, say, you only get half of the damage, even if you're at half of the max range, it's still a pretty nice damage addition there. So that's definitely an option. Another option would be the Pain Enhancer, as long as it's ranked up to, to rank 25 to get more attack speed. If you're going to play that way, you need to make sure that you're relatively close to the enemies, though, uh, to get the extra attack speed. 
All right, guys, so we're going to quickly do a Torment 6 Rift. I try to average three to four minute clears, at least up to the Rift boss, and then after that, if you want to clear the rest of the Rift, that's fine. Um, sometimes quicker than that, sometimes a little bit slower, just depending on the Rift layout and the setup and what mob type you get. But for the most part, it's really pretty fast. It's not going to clear as fast as Jade, like I've said a few times, and, you know, there's of quite a few specs across all the classes that will clear a little bit quicker than this but this is really fun and it's competitive enough and efficient enough to to really do well and be viable so i'm going to turn my mic off for the gameplay portion of the video uh, as always thank you guys very much for watching and i will see you next time Self-worth.